Good morning. Good morning. I am sure that there are three things you should get from your college education. Number one thing you should learn in whatever college you go to, the number one thing you should learn is what you love to do. It might be theater and biology. It might be neuroscience and religion. It might be, as it was for me, history and philosophy. Whatever it is, it should be yours, not what you think you're good at. So many students who get into places like Wesleyan have already worked pretty hard. They've already been tutored and polished. They've been edited and groomed. And they know what they're good at. I got an 800 on my math SAT. I got a 5. That's a 5 on the AP, right? That kind of stuff. And you might have this illusion, it's a horrible illusion, that you should do what you've been rewarded for doing with good grades. That's a terrible mistake. It's terrible because you don't want to wake up when you're at my ripe old age and say, I don't really like what I'm doing. I've been get people keep rewarding me for it, but I, I, I find no meaning in it. I find no joy in it. That's not me. You don't want to do that now when you're my age. Now's the time when you have the chance to experiment, when you have the chance to open yourself up to new things, when you can discover who you are, who you might become, not who gets the grade. What you should do, number one, is to discover what you love to do. Now, the second thing, though, is really important. You have to get better at it. Whatever you discover you love to do, it's important to develop the skills to do it at a level that other people recognize as being of the highest quality. You have probably been told by your parents, friends, and maybe even other family members how bright you are. You may have seen your work on refrigerators and think that that is a kind of high praise rather than the cultivation of your narcissism. <laughs> at college, whatever college you choose, I hope you get, you fail at something important to you. I've had students come into my office, a friend of mine now came into my office three years ago. He said to me, President Roth, I don't get C's. And I looked at him and I said, congratulations then, <laughs> you've just gotten your first. And he was apoplectic, he was so angry with me. But he did so much better work as a result of being uh, kicked in the shins a little bit. I hope whatever you choose to do, you find passion in it, and then you find challenge in it. You get good, so that will make you better. And I'll tell you one other story about that. We're doing an event uh, next week in New York City with Matthew Weiner. Matt, Matt Weiner is the creator of Bad Men. He went to the Wesleyan, he, he's a COL grad, and when the show became a hit show, um, you know, a couple of years ago, he's winning all these awards. This is when the college president comes to call. So I knock on uh, Matt Weiner's door, he receives me royally in his madman's suite, full of, he said they were just decor, bottles of uh, liquor um, and uh, cigarette ashtrays like in that show, Mad Men, everybody's drinking and smoking all the time. Um, and, he's, and he's very interesting and he's very funny. And I, and I say, well, of course, because my job is to get him to give money for scholarships. My, I say to him, Mr. Mr. Weiner, you owe it all to Westmead, don't you? <laughs> and he says, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And I'm, Man, is it great? Gonna get the big bucks. And he says to me, you know what I go to Wesleyan? Wesleyan showed me, I can't use his exact words because we are being taped, but he, they showed me that I'm a crappy poet. I said, oh, and my hopes are receding. So Mr. Matt Weiner said to me, what I owe to Wesleyan was getting clear about what I couldn't do and knowing that I could be a television writer. Matt loves the school. Uh, but one of the things he loves about it was that professors who cared about you were not afraid to tell you that you're not very good at something yet, but you might get really great at something if you don't become complacent. So the first thing you need to do at any school you go to is discover what you love to do. The second thing you have to do is get better at it because you're not good enough yet. Whatever they've told you, you're not good enough yet. We need you to be better at what you love to do. The third thing, and the last thing, I hope you learn from whatever college or university you attend, 
is how to take what you love to do, what you've gotten better at, and then, and then learn how to share it with other people. Learn how to put it out into the world. Learn how to put it into a company or a not-for-profit <coughs> organization or a classroom. Learn how to take the work you're good at and that you love and find its audience. That's very important today because it's very important for our students when they graduate from Wesley not to just say, I've read great books or I've done an interesting science, but to be able to say, I've done interesting science and now I'm going to do this with it in this organization or in this graduate school or in this profession. I don't think you'll find a more fervent believer in the liberal arts than the guy holding the microphone in front of you today. But I am a fervent believer in the liberal arts, not as a polishing exercise for the wealthy, but as a way of grooming new generations of people who will, through their passion, expertise, and desire to connect with others, solve the most important problems in our world. What you want when you leave a college or university, whatever college or university you go to, when you leave there, you want to be prepared for a lifetime of meaningful work. So the liberal arts education today is, I think, America's best chance to invent a future that is preferable to what we're facing right now. That's why people from all over the world want to come to our university. That's why I was asked to go to Beijing and talk to the, at the University of Beijing about liberal arts education because the, the, the folks there felt that their education was too test-driven and too uh, much based on rote learning. The time to be defensive about education is not now. This is the time to be aggressive about a broadly based, intensely personal, and intensively practical form of education. Whatever school you go to, at Weston, we look for people who are exuberant, who are ambitious, who want to share their work with other people, and while they're here, don't see themselves in competition with other students. They see themselves as inspiring other students to do more than those students thought they could. Whether it's in athletics or theater, the social sciences, the sciences, or humanities. That's an environment I think is so exciting. That's why I love this job. I'm amazed that they, they, they send me a check every month. I think it's every month I should check. <laughs> because I, I feel that about this place the same way I felt in 1975, which is that I stumbled upon a place where people love what they do, are working really hard, and finding ways to connect the, what they work on with what we need in the world or what we need in the world we don't even realize we need yet. It's a privilege to be here. I hope you have a great, great visit. Um, and uh, whatever happens at Wesleyan, I hope you find a school that inspires your love and devotion. Thank you very much.